What's going on my dudes? One Step here with the top five hardest characters to learn in Street Fighter 6. Take it one step at a time. As we get into it, if you enjoy fighting game content and you want more of it, make sure to subscribe here because we have new videos Monday and Friday. Now, two main things to consider when it comes to easy to learn versus hard to learn is first, how difficult it is to understand their game plan, and second, how difficult it is to execute that game plan. As we know, Street Fighter VI has a very diverse cast of characters with different fighting styles, different game plans, different moveset specials and supers and more. Some get in quick and heavy, some stay back and throw fireballs, creating different situations with traps and more. These are just characters characters that I believe are just a bit harder to pick up from the get-go for most beginners or more new players to the franchise or to the game. And again, despite being difficult to learn, these characters will be really hard to deal with in the hands of someone who has spent a lot of time with them and learning their moveset, learning how to play them. That's kind of the appeal to these characters. And if you're looking for a character that may have a unique learning curve, you've come to the right place to start our list off of the bit more challenging characters to learn. First, we have JP. JP's got some pretty complex combos and setups that require memory and skill skill to master, but your opponent will never touch you if you're good at it. JP wants to set traps that explode spikes and damage into an approaching opponent. He wants to throw projectiles and ghosts and keep his opponent away from him. A big challenge for learning JP will be characters that are built to get in like Cammy, Kimberly, and Marissa. Some of his tools are not instant like setting up voids in the air, but that you can teleport if you need to. And understanding when you should teleport when you should not, that can be a learning curve as well. Setting those traps up and then being more aggressive to have those traps pop out maybe during your combo and more. The biggest challenge for JP is memorizing his spacing, the spikes from the ground and the voids he creates in the air. A lot of new players might just have a bit of a challenge understanding really how to play JP from the get-go because of his game plan, and they might start to misjudge the spacing and the recovery that can leave you open for counterattack. Is the hard road to learn JP worth it? Absolutely. Next, we have DJ. DJ is all about faking out your opponent and making them play to the rhythm that you set to the fight. His charge inputs, as well as crazy mix-ups, can be hard to learn at first, but again, way worth it. He might be easy to pick up from the start and start to play with, but his game plan is much deeper than what you'd expect from first glance. DJ's kit is pretty good and seems, you know, pretty straightforward to begin with, but look at how many fake outs he has. To be really effective with DJ, you'll want to play mind games with your opponent, and a lot of new players don't want to do that. They just want to get in there, press buttons, and hit your opponent. They don't want to play mind game. Well, DJ is all about that. The easiest form of that is conditioning. You know, throw out a fireball, maybe it hit, throw out another one, or fake him out. They're probably expecting it, so maybe jump over it. Super R2 has its own follow-up combo that you want to memorize the timing of if you really want to get the most out of it. The charge inputs he has himself just for a couple specials can even for beginners be just be a tad more challenging to grasp of like why I need to do that. So though he's well worth learning, the learning curve can be just a bit challenging for new players. Now some players might not put Cammy on this list, but I do because she's got a high skill ceiling because she's so fast. She has a ton of potential for combos and pokes, being able to confirm off of a lot of those requirements speed and skill. She even walks faster than most characters, so you might be playing a character and get used to the rhythm, used to the speed of the fight, Well, Cammy changes that up. And speed in fighting games is a big advantage. Cammy is one of those characters that has a high skill setting that would require a lot of practice to get really good with. To be fair, you can pick her up and understand her pretty easily early on, but with the cannon spike and the hooligan combination follow-ups you can do with the mix-ups to really make those effective, it just takes a bit more time of training to get those down perfectly. With Cammy Link, can have a pretty tight timing in general and with Kami speed the timing is precise. The reward for sticking with her is a character that's difficult to play against and can have some pretty crazy tech so to learn Kami stick with her and get good with her well worth it. Jamie makes this list because his drink level dictates your moves and combos that you have access to that requires special attention during the fight. He's got no projectiles so super aggressive using command grabs and mix-ups. A lot of new players don't really want to focus on the gimmicks like oh I'm on drink level two so I have access to this combo but not this one just yet and Jamie's all about that especially because his drink level resets every round so throughout the entire round you're focusing okay where are my drink level at what combos end in me taking a swig to up my drink level and then what combos do I have access to within that drink level how do I get to four as fast as possible there's a lot to think about your mental stack is pretty high out the gate when playing Jamie Jamie's not a bad character by any means in fact I love Jamie he's got some real sauce when he's sauced up but for a new player looking for a character 
easier to stick with and easy to learn off the get-go. These challenges with the resource management and move list restriction is just something to be aware of when learning Jamie. Blanca makes our top five because he requires charge inputs for quite a few specials. He's got setups with dolls like traps and they do different things based on how they're activated and a really unique super art too. And all of these combined can make Blanca pretty hard to grasp out the gate for new players. Blanca is an unorthodox character of sorts. His goal is to kind of be wherever his opponent is not expecting him to be. You got to catch the opponent off guard, set the traps with your Blanca Chan doll. And again, those dolls set certain traps depending on how they're activated with your supers and your specials. So you got to plan around that. How do I want to activate my traps? How do I want to get in there? How do I want to be sporadic? When can I command throw my opponent? Because he's got a good command grab. Super Art 2 just allows you to be more aggressive and use your rolling attacks more often without charging them. Because of the experimentation, he can be a bit, you know, trial and error character, which can be frustrating if you're not expecting it. Just out the gate, Blanca is not as straightforward as some other characters are. And again, is it really worth putting the time in to learn Blanca and master him? I would say absolutely. These are just the five characters that I think are going to be a bit more challenging out the gate, especially for new players. Let me know down below which characters do you find hard to learn in Street Fighter 6. Again, I want to hear your thoughts down below. In your fighting game journey, make sure and take it one step at a time, and I will see you in the next one.